So what can we expect from these two Korean presidents? Graham Ong Webb joins me now from Singapore. He is a research fellow at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. Many thanks for speaking to us on TRT World. I was speaking to my uh, correspondent in Seoul a little earlier who was already uh, saying that, Kim, uh, that the South Korean president is already trying to pare down expectations of what can be achieved in this meeting. What do you think can be achieved in this meeting? Uh, I'm also quite realistic about the outcome of this third summit. Uh, I would say, in a nutshell, not very much. We're still um, stuck in gear, so to speak, uh, over the course of this year in trying to get the uh, form of the relationship right before we actually go in into the matters of substance. So right now, there is still a significant trust deficit to be had uh, amongst all stakeholders involved in the Korean Peninsula crisis. And the purpose of this third summit is really to re-inject positive vibes that have sort of slipped over the last few weeks, the last couple of months, since the 12th of June summit between President Donald Trump and Mr. Kim Jong-un. Do you think the South Korean uh, president is under pressure to try and achieve something on denuclearization? The, the world's eyes are, are watching him very closely. Absolutely. I mean, this is a man uh, not to be envied because there is an immense amount of pressure that he's had to bring, you know, he's had to carry uh, over the last uh, a few months in uh, in uh, trying to, to, you know, carve a path forward for everyone. I mean, mind you, just recently, uh, Donald Trump uh, himself uh, called uh, Mr. Uh, Moon Jae-in a chief negotiator in these proceedings, in trying to hold a fort and try to break an impasse in getting Mr. Kim uh, Jong-un to uh, play a ball, so to speak, in the denuclearization process. So there's immense pressure on, on Moon Jae-in to a point where I think this is a make or break summit for him. I mean, right now, in terms of his, his poll ratings back in uh, South Korea, they are dipping and slipping. Uh, and so he's got to deliver uh, not just economic dividends to his people back home, but also security dividends as well, in terms of trying to diffuse the long-standing tensions between North and South Korea. So a lot of expectations over the next few days I don't think he'll bring much home, uh, except perhaps to bring out more positive vibes and maybe pave the way for a meeting between uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump sometime this year. Uh, talking uh, a bit more about the economy, do you think uh, the South Korean president could use the economy and economic relations between North and South uh, in, it, in its favor as a bargaining chip uh, to get what it wants from, the North, from North Korea? Possibly, and this is the reason why he's um, brought a very significant business entourage along with him. I mean, the likes of Hyundai and Samsung uh, to dangle an economic carrot. But mind you, he can't put the cart before the horse because the horse in itself is the long, the, the standing economic sanctions that stand in the way of uh, of uh, uh, economic uh, goodies that uh, the North can enjoy, uh, which can only be uh, brought to bear once uh, North Korea uh, does what is required in terms of the denuclearization process in order to lift those sanctions. But what Mr. Uh, Moon Jae-in is seeking to do is to remind Mr. Kim Jong-un of the great benefits the country can enjoy uh, should it choose to uh, follow the path that has been suggested to it in terms of putting down its nuclear weapons, uh, you know, irreversibly, to have those verified, and to uh, shift its, uh, its uh, focus towards economic development, which in the long term is not only good for North Korea, but good for the whole region. Graham Ong Webb, very interesting to hear your thoughts uh, speaking to us from Singapore.